What's up, it's Susie from Hey Grill Hey, and today we're doing a quick intro to sous vide style cooking with a beautiful sous vide ribeye steak. Let's do it. Now sous vide cooking is a method that I would give like a medium on the difficulty scale. Not because it's actually hard to master, but because it requires some specialty equipment. Speaking of equipment, let's jump right into what is sous vide. Sous vide is a French style of cooking that involves low temperature immersion cooking, which means your food is immersed underwater and circulated to maintain a perfect temperature while it rises slowly so you get a beautiful even cook all the way throughout your food. This is really popular in kind of those high-end barbecue circles because you're able to get that perfect coast to coast, medium rare pink on the inside of even the thickest cuts of steak. The most common applications for sous vide cooking is actually in the restaurant industry, but because of devices like the Innova and other sous vide machines, it's making forays into backyard and home cooking as well. Now I gotta be honest with you, I've had one of these for a couple of years. I don't use it a ton. I find the bulky equipment necessary to do sous vide cooking is a little bit of a hindrance to me personally. I'm more of a fire up the grill, you know, season it, throw it on there, let it do its thing kind of a girl. But I think different cooking methods are always fun to explore. This is a great one that we do utilize for cooking, but most commonly use for actually reheating barbecue that we have vacuum sealed. It's one of my favorite methods for reheating barbecue leftovers. Now that we've covered what it is, let's talk about how to use it. So I've got my immersion circulator filled with water to the minimum fill line, and I've set my temperature to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the final temperature that I want my ribeye steak cooked to before I finish it with a hard crusty sear on the outside. It'll give me a beautiful between rare and medium rare steak. If you're gonna be using this for reheating to a serving temperature, I recommend about 140 to 145 degrees Fahrenheit, especially if you're reheating something like pulled pork, chicken, brisket. I think that's the ideal serving temperature. Another tool that you really need to take advantage of if you are gonna be doing sous vide cooking is a vacuum sealing machine. These specific bags are designed to suck out all of the oxygen. It also prevents any water from getting in the bag. You don't want to boil your steak by just putting it directly in the water. You have to create a barrier to keep the liquid out. The vacuum seals are the most popular way to do that. I have seen people using freezer bags, like the gallon zip top freezer bags and sucking the air out, but that stresses me out because I think there's a lot of risk of breaking that seal and getting moisture inside of your food. With my food saver bag, I am doing a simple ribeye today. So I'm gonna season this with my beef seasoning. It's really common to go very simple on the seasoning in sous vide cooking. Most people, even with steaks, will just stick with salt initially, and then they'll add some additional seasoning before the final sear. But with my beef rub seasoning, I'm not too worried about it. It has garlic and onion powder in there, and I know that as the moisture from the meat starts to you know, come out of the meat itself, it's actually gonna rehydrate some of that onion and garlic in there, and that's gonna add additional flavor to the meat while it's set. So, having used this before, I'm not too worried about it, but if you're nervous about what type of seasoning to use in a sous vide, stick with simple salt and pepper. One of the cool things about sous vide cooking is you can add additional flavors to your meat during the slow cooking process that you wouldn't really be able to do at the beginning of a cook. So I'm gonna pop in some aromatics like thyme and a smashed clove of garlic. Smash! I'm just gonna break it into pieces. I did not want to smash today. It was too strong for me. I was bested by the garlic bulb. Once you've got your steak and your aromatics in your bag, you just wanna seal it, suck out all of that extra air, and press those herbs and aromatics up against your meat. Okay, once my steak is seasoned and sealed, it's going into the sous vide immersion circulator. I wanna just let it float under the water. And the way that the immersion circulator works is it sucks in the water, heats it in this vertical heater, and then spits it out the other side. So it creates a swirling bath of perfect temperature water, which is gonna give us that ideal cooking temperature in the meat itself. I like to leave things like steaks in the sous vide for about an hour. I think an hour gets them to the perfect internal temperature without making them too mushy. I know people that have done steaks in a sous vide machine for 12 hours, 24, I've even seen up to 48 hours. But what happens with that extended cook 
at a low temperature is the meat actually starts to break down and change texture and become mushy. I think one hour is the ideal amount of time to give you the doneness that you're looking for, but also the tenderness and texture that you're looking for without making your steaks mushy. Steaks have been in our sous vide for an hour. Temperature is holding 120.0, 120.1. Very close to being on temperature. It's a little steamy in here. Our steak is looking like a bummer. <laughs> Listen, this is the downside of sous vide steaks is when you take them out, you just have gray. Your steaks just look gray because they are not seared. They have no Maillard reaction, no browning, and you can't see that beautiful pink medium rare inside. So you just get a sack of gray meat. But we're gonna change that with the second phase of our cooking process, which is a high heat sear to sear in all the flavor, all the juiciness, and give us a beautiful medium rare steak. Okay, let's talk about searing our steaks. I'm gonna be searing mine over ripping hot charcoal because I love the flavor of a charcoal seared steak and when the fat drips down and the smoke comes up, it's just a really beautiful experience. But if you like a super crispy coating, you can also sear in a cast iron pan, in a skillet. Um, I've even seen people sear their sous vide steaks with a giant blowtorch. So, you know, choose your own adventure in this one. Now I'm hoping the inside of my steak here is gonna clock a perfect 120 degrees. It's been in for about an hour. Look at that. I got 119 right in the center of that steak, which means it is perfectly cooked on the inside and should give me a really lovely rare to mid-rare finish. All right, I don't wanna sear the thyme or the garlic, so that's gonna stay in the bag and this gray steak is gonna get some color. I mean, all of the color that we were missing coming out of the bag, we got from that hot charcoal. Now I'm gonna let this steak rest. I don't think it needs to rest for 10 to 15 minutes, for example. I just want that high heat on the outside to finish any carryover cooking. Let it rest for a little bit because the rise in temperature was so gradual in that sous vide, it's not gonna need a lot of resting time and 125 degrees is actually a great temperature to be eating a steak at. So I don't think it needs a super long extended rest when you do this style of cooking. Now, if the sous vide did what it was supposed to do, we should have a beautiful steak inside that is nice and medium rare all the way throughout. It should also be really juicy. Yeah, look at that. That is a beautiful pink and juicy looking ribeye. And again, ribeye was just a solid introduction to sous vide cooking, I think, but I have seen people use a sous vide machine for so many things, including chicken and like I said, reheating leftover barbecue. So if that's a tool you wanna play around with and experiment with, I think there are lots of great options out there on the market now that are really a lot more affordable than they were a couple of years ago. So I'll link the one that I'm using in the video description below. You can check it out. Um, or you can try a couple different cheater ways of doing sous vide style cooking at home. For me, I think it's a fun toy to play around with and it makes a really beautiful looking steak, but we gotta see how it tastes, right? Hot dang. I will say I think it's missing some of the smoky flavor that I get when I do a traditional reverse sear, which is all done on the grill, but the juiciness level of that steak is off the charts. That might be the most moist, please don't hate me for saying that word, but moist piece of ribeye I've ever had in my life. And this wasn't even like a prime, this was just a good old choice ribeye. And that thing is juicy. I mean, I might be tempted to try this again in a couple other different ways. Let me know if you've ever tried sous vide cooking in the comments section below or something that you try sous vide cooking at home. We'll see you next time. So juicy.